Shalom Aleichem, my dear brothers and sisters. So the question is, does the Torah mention dinosaurs? And I actually think it does. And I'll tell you why. I actually he heard this first from my friend, and then I eventually I heard some rabbis also talk about this. So we have in the book of uh, Genesis, the first book of uh, the Torah, where Hashem talks about the creation in chapter 1. And it says that on the fifth day of creation, that Hashem created, you know, the fish and the birds. And one of the things it mentions is that He created a big or huge taninim. This is a verse in Genesis chapter 1, verse 21. Now, what exactly is tanin? Singular is tanin and plural is taninim. So sometimes, you know, some Torahs translate it as like sea giants or monsters or something like that. I'm not even sure exactly how the Christian uh, Bibles translate it. But this is actually a rare word that appears in the Torah. And in order to really understand what it means, we have to go throughout the Torah, throughout the Tanakh, and try to, you know, look what, where this word appears and try to um, try to interpret it based on the context in those other verses. So, so w this word again appears in the episode where Moses, peace be upon him, went in front of Pharaoh and performed a miracle. If you remember, he threw the stick in front of the Pharaoh. And what did the stick turn into? Now, right away, many of you are going to say a snake, because that's what you've heard, right? And that's what you saw in the movie. And uh, this is a verse, actually, in Exodus 7, chapter 7, verse 10. But if you read in the Hebrew, in the original Hebrew, that's why, by the way, it's really important to learn the original Hebrew, because these things you will miss in the translations. In the translations, you will never know these things. But in the original, you can pay attention to the exact words. It says that when Moses threw the stick in front of the Pharaoh, it turned into a tanin. It turned into a tanin. Now, yes, Bibles usually translate this to mean snake. However, the regular word for a snake in Hebrew is a different word. It's a nachash. Nachash is the word for snake. But in this verse, it uses the word tanin. Now, how do the... Uh, translators know or where did they even get this idea that this was a snake uh, well later on we see later on in um, the same chapter in uh, Exodus chapter 7 but verse 15 this time where Hashem talks to Moses and he refers to that stick which was turned into and this time the Torah uses the word Nahash which is a regular word for snake so from this context we can tell that Tanin is same thing as Nahash somehow, right? Because in one place it uses Tanin, and then when Hashem refers to that stick, he uses the word for snake, which is Nahash. That's one uh, uh, area where we can uh, interpret this word. Another area we have in Ezekiel chapter 29, verse 3, where Hashem compares Pharaoh to a, a, a Tanin again in the river, like a uh, tanin in the river and many um, commentators translate the word as a uh, crocodile in that um, verse in fact even in the verse where Moses threw down the stick one of the commentators by the name of Abraham Ibn Ezra also translates the word as a crocodile now going back to Genesis where Genesis 1 verse 20 uh, Genesis 1 chapter 1 verse 21 where Hashem created these great Taninim um, Gdolim in Hebrew, right? Um, uh, one of the commentators, Rashi, translates this as some kind of giant sea uh, creatures or sea monsters or something like that. And so now, uh, going to the whole context of Genesis, that we see that when Hashem created, for example, the animals, right? The Torah does not specify which animals he created. It doesn't say that Hashem created tigers, lions, right? It just says animals. Where, where it talks about the creation of the fish, it doesn't say that Hashem created sharks, you know, uh, carps, bass. No, it just says fish. All. So based on this context, the word tanin, the big taninim, are also supposed to be something general, not specific animal, but something general. Now, what do all these things have in common? The uh, snake, the crocodile, and some kind of sea creatures. 
what they all have in common is that they are cold-blooded creatures or sometimes called reptiles. So now if you translate the word tanin as a reptile, that means that Hashem created huge reptiles. And that's what the uh, verse in Genesis 1.21 says, that Hashem created huge reptiles. And that what's interesting is that this is the only one species where Hashem says huge. He doesn't say that about animals or the fish. Specifically about the taninim, he says that they are huge uh, taninim gdolim. It's huge uh, taninim. And it's interesting, I actually heard from somebody that in Arabic, the word for tanin is a, is, means like a dragon. So that's also interesting. So therefore, I think that this verse is actually talking about dinosaurs. In fact, I checked it out on Wikipedia that the biggest dinosaur that existed was a reptile. Uh, you know, so the biggest ones were reptiles, and I think it makes perfect sense that the Taninim Gdolim that Hashem created on the fifth day were the dinosaurs. And I'm curious, actually, if this is a request to my viewers. I know a lot of you, you know, speak different languages. You you are all from all dif all different parts of the world. If you can think in your native language, if there is the word similar to Tanin or uh, tanin is a singular tanin and if you can tell me what it means in your um, language if there is such a word similar to that word and i'm just curious to know if this um, uh, you know root of this word appears in other language i know about the arabic but if somebody can confirm that that would be great too and uh, so thank you for watching